welcome to lecture number 13 the following topics will be covered in this lecture introduction to dorm dorm tree dorm methods wherein we will cover node creation and manipulation and accessing elements let's start with introduction to dorm before we officially start with dorm let's consider this web page you need to consider this web page as if we are looking at a document you can see it has certain elements as you can see text and you can see images as well and there can be various other elements now you need to imagine this document as a family tree so each element like the headings the images and the paragraphs or any other kind of text it's like a family member so each element will act as a family member we are actually trying to relate this concept with dom that is the document object model in javascript so what is dom the document object model is like a map or a blueprint of the web page that the browser creates when they are loading a web page so whenever your browser is loading the web page it creates a blueprint of your uh, of your web page so it's like a family tree where every html element is a different member of the family and they are related in some way now how does it work we represent these elements as objects so all these elements will be represented as objects uh, that we can interact with using javascript so each object has its own properties and methods that we can use to change or manipulate them document object model is the data representation of the objects that comprise the structure and content of a document on the web a web page is a document that can be either displayed in the browser window or as an html source this document as a whole and other elements in the document are the parts of the document object model for the document they can all be accessed and manipulated using the dom and a scripting language like javascript uh, let's have a look at what is a dom tree a dom tree is a tree structure whose nodes represent an html document's content and each html document has a dom tree representation let's understand this with the help of a code let's say you have been given this piece of code where you can see we have html tag we have head tag title body h1 paragraph so all these are the different kinds of tags that we have inserted in this uh, you can say in this piece of code now if you are asked to create a dom tree that is a document object model so you need to create a tree out of it we already have discussed with the help of the web page that dom is like a family tree now if you are asked to create a tree related to this this is how it would be created so understand that each and every element is kind of an object it's an object representation so first of all you have your document your html this html file this html code will act as a document so later on you are having the very first that is the root object that is the root element that is html where further you are creating the the family tree or the dom tree you have the head tag then you have the body tag inside head you have the title within that title you have the my document as a text inside the body you have the two children where you can see h1 tag and paragraph tag and with the h1 you can see the text written is there's a text node called as header and there is another text node within the paragraph that is a paragraph so this way we create a dom tree so you need to always look at a web page as if it is like a dom representation it's a dom tree it's a family tree using this concept we can do certain operations inside uh, using the javascript now let's have a look at the dom methods dom methods are the actions that you can perform on objects or elements of dom dom methods include selecting the element creating a new element changing the content of the element 
or changing the CSS or removing the element, etc. So there are certain things that we can perform with DOM. And one of them is node creation and manipulation. What is the purpose? This refers to the process of creating new nodes or in other words, elements or text in the document object model and modifying the existing nodes to create, to change the structure or content of the web page. So the first one we are having is document.createElement wherein we have the parameter as the tag name. What it does, it creates a new HTML element with the specified tag name. Next is document.createTextNode wherein the parameter is text. So this will create a new text node with the specified text. Further we have parent node dot append child and the parameter is the node. So this will add a new child node to the end of the list of children of a specified parent node. And the last one is parent node dot remove child. The parameter is node. This removes a child node from the DOM. We are going to implement all these four methods one by one. First, let's create one element whose name I'll take as P. Let's say we are going to create a paragraph. So I'm writing const P equals to what is the method that is required is document dot create element create element and the parameter is the name of that element that you want to create. So right now I'm creating a paragraph. So I'll be writing here P. So after saving this, you won't see any changes. Still, we haven't included any content inside the paragraph. For modifying the content in this paragraph, you need to write the paragraph that is this P or you can also write para whatever the variable that you want to take you can have it so we are simply declaring a variable that holds the creation of this paragraph so i'm using the same variable para dot in order to modify the content i need to write text content so text content is just a property it's not a method so after writing the text content you need to write whatever the text that you want to have inside this paragraph and that is let's say it's hello after saving the file still there are no changes on the web page the reason for this is because we have to make it visible on the uh, on the document we have to make it visible on the web page and that can be done with the help of append child you need to append each and every element as a child in your dom or else no element will be visible for this you need to use document you need to append the child to which tag we are not having any any other tag apart from the paragraph right now we are simply having the body so we will write document dot body we need to append this child to the body tag we are going to include this paragraph inside the body that is why we are writing document.body.appendChild. In appendChild function, the parameter that we are going to use is this para. After writing the para, you will observe that the paragraph is now visible on the web page. After this, let's say you want to create a text node. For the text node, you need to use document.createTextNode. You can define a variable, const, let's say I'm using text, any variable can be taken, and use document.createTextNode, within which you need to pass the parameter as a simple text. Let's say I'm writing, how are you? This is just a simple text and uh, this is not inside any element. It's just a simple text node. Now, after using this, after creation of this text, we need to append this also as a child to the body. So, we are going to write, why we are using append child? As we already discussed, that it's a family tree. Since it's a family tree, so every time we need to append the child. Document.body.append 
dot append child and we want to append what that is text so once it is appended you will be able to see this text on the web page let's modify this example let's create a div tag and we will include the paragraph inside the div and later we will apply some background color to the div so let's say i'm creating a div with the name as div any variable can be taken and use document dot document dot create element and the parameter that we need to pass is div the div is now created but yet there are no changes on the web page because the div is not added to the body so for this let's add the div to the body document dot body dot append child and i am appending div for the time being i am commenting this text node right and now after this let's apply some style to the div using the type selector give it background color as let's say it's pink we are also going to give height and width height let's say 100 px and width also we are going to take as 100 px as you can see that the div is now available on the web page but you can observe that the paragraph is not yet added to the div so how we can do it it is not visible inside the div because we are adding the paragraph to the directly to the body but not to the div as we can see that it's actually a family tree so first of all we need the body later on the div is added to the body and further the paragraph needs to be added to the div so it's a tree for this what you have to do instead of writing body remove this and use div so when you use div dot append child and use paragraph as the parameter you will see that you will observe that the paragraph is now added to the div tag now another functionality that we are left with is using the remove child method so you want to remove this div tag completely you can use document dot body or any tag from which you want to remove the child use body dot remove child and you need to specify whatever the tag you want to remove so we want to remove what we want to remove div so once you write div here the div will disappear similarly if you want to remove the paragraph from the div you can use div you can use div dot remove child and what is the child that you want to remove that is the paragraph hence the paragraph will be removed now after node creation and manipulation let's see how we can access the elements using dom accessing elements refer to the process of targeting and retrieving specific html elements within a web document using various methods provided by the dom after accessing the elements we can make certain modifications in the elements so we are not actually creating any element here we are simply accessing them and trying to modify them the first method involved here is document dot get element by id wherein the parameter to be passed in this method is the id of the element this returns the element that has the id attribute with the specified value next method is document dot get elements by class name wherein the parameter we pass is the name of the class this will return a collection of all the elements in the document with the specified class name then document dot get elements by tag name where we pass the parameter as the name of the tag this returns a live html collection of html elements with the given tag name the next method is document dot query selector the parameter to be passed is the selector itself 
this method returns the first element that matches a specified CSS selector. Then we have document.query selector all. The parameter to be passed is the, the selector itself. This will return a static node list representing a list of elements that match the specified group of selectors. Now let's implement all these methods and try to understand their functionality. Consider this example where I have already included three paragraphs with the content this is a paragraph one, this is a paragraph two and this is a paragraph three. And to each and every paragraph I have specified the ID, a unique ID to each of these paragraphs as P1, P2 and P3 and a common class called as para to all these paragraphs. Now let's start with our first method that is document dot get element by id so here we are going to use document dot get element by id access the id now which id do we want to now access i would like to access let's say p3 for now i'm accessing p3 after accessing you can change the content or you can change the css right now we are not working on css so let's try to change the content for changing the content, you can either use dot inner HTML property or inner text. So right now we are not including any HTML, but we simply want to include some text. So let's write inner text dot inner text equals to I want that it should be changed to this is some paragraph. So once it is changed, you can see that. Uh, on the web page, the changes are now reflecting. It is showing this is some paragraph. So using dot get element by ID, you can actually change or modify the content or the styling of your element. Now let's say we want to change the content of all these paragraphs. One way is that we use document dot get element by ID again for these two IDs individually. That is for P1 and P2 individually. Or uh, the second way is that we can access the common class that we have applied here. So we are now going to use the second way. Instead of using the IDs, now we are going to access the elements via their class name. So let's first of all comment this. And we need to create one variable that will hold all the elements hold all the elements of this class that is para so i'm simply creating one variable as elements and i'll be using document dot get elements by class name why we need why we need to create a variable because later on using this variable we are going to loop through it because we are going to access multiple elements so document dot get elements by class name and the name of the class is para. So once this is applied, we need to loop through this. We are using for loop for this for let's say let i equals to let i equals to zero and i less than I'll be using this elements variable and I need to use the length. The length property will be used and I plus plus. So for looping through, we have used the for loop. And now we are going to change the inner text of these elements. For this, we are going to use elements. And then because it's now representing an array. So we'll be using uh, I for all the elements. This is at the zeroth index. This is at the zeroth index and this will be at the first index and this paragraph will be at the second index. Elements of i dot we are now going to use inner inner text inner text equals to let's say hello. So you can see that it has changed the inner text, the content of all the paragraphs to hello. In the same way, you can also use get elements by tag name. 
instead of using class name you can use by tag name and use the tag itself so use the tag that is p and you can see that you are still able to change the content so it's actually the same kind of stuff that you want to perform but using different methods you can either use uh, get element by id get element get elements by class name or get elements by tag name so we are still left with two more methods that now we are going to implement we are now going to use query selector document dot query selector the parameter we are passing is the paragraph that is the p tag and we will change the inner text let's say to hello and you will observe that only the first paragraph is changed to hello. It's because it will return only the first element that matches up with your tag. It will not fetch all the paragraphs, but only the very first one. Let's now use the query selector all. For this, we are commenting this. And create a variable as const elements, const elements to equals to document dot query selector all query selector all and pass the selector so here you can either pass the paragraph uh, tag itself or you can pass the class if you want to pass the class you can use para but here you need to use dot para and then change you need to change the inner text of this for changing the inner text as it is now representing all the paragraphs this para class is representing all the paragraphs we need to loop through it so let's use the same for loop as used here we are going to paste it here and we will change the name of the variable change the name of the variable here as well after the change of the variable, you will see that uh, we are looping through, we are actually looping through all these elements with the common class as para, whose text is now changed to hello for all the paragraphs. We have approached the end of this lecture. These are the references. And these are the program links. That's all for this lecture.